So we've made a machine that uses AI to take a photo of every flower on all sides, and as it falls off of a conveyor, there's a little puff of air that will shoot it out and separate that flower out from the good flower. So all the good flower will fall and the bad flower will be shot out. We only recommend dry trimming now. Wet trimming used to be something that we did recommend, but if you want the best smelling flower possible, dry trimming is the best way. And so when you trim the flower dry, you don't get that, that bad smell. Flower can go from being really good to not so good really quickly if you don't do that, that portion of the process right. And so that's where we spend most of our time. I'm Jay Evans, I'm the founder of Kirtan. Uh, we make a, a brand of trimmers and post-harvest technology called Twister Technology. And so behind me is a couple of our trimmers. We make a range of trimming machines from small batch trimmers to large industrial sized commercial trimmers. How has AI improved the world of cannabis? So yeah, we've recently developed a AI vision system. So for us to inspect cannabis at high speed and look for deficiencies in the flower. So if, if you were to produce say a thousand pounds of cannabis and you were to trim it by a machine, you still need to go through and look at it all to make sure it's the quality you want. There might be some mold in it, there might be uh, too much stem or too much leaf. There might be something that's not perfect. So we've made a machine that uses AI to take a photo of every flower on all sides. And as it falls off of a conveyor, there's a little puff of air that will shoot it out and separate that flower out from the good flower. So all the good flower will fall and the bad flower will be shot out. How do you came up with this? So I was a commercial grower. Uh, I started in 1990. Well, I wasn't a commercial grower in 1997, but I started growing in 1997. And by around 2007, I was growing a fairly large amount of cannabis. What is the large amount of cannabis, sir? Uh, <laughs> uh, I had a few thousand lamps, hundreds of pounds uh, a week. Okay. Yeah. At the time, we would hire trimmers. We'd bring in people to come in and trim it. We'd have 50, 60, 70 people to be trimming for us. Uh, the challenge was that then it wasn't necessarily legal. And so we had a lot of risk bringing these people in to trim for us. And so we ended up making a machine that did the trimming. That's where the trimmer was born. A lot of people claim that these kind of machines do not compare to manual trimming. What do you respond to that? You'll never get the same trimming out of a, out of a machine as you can by hand, but you will get way more efficiency, way less uh, time, time spent trimming. So you'll never lose quality in terms of potency. So if you were to take flour that was trimmed by hand and flour that was trimmed by a machine and send it to a laboratory for testing, it will both come back with the same potency always plus or minus 1%. We've done hundreds of lab tests with this. It's always plus or minus 1%. What does change? So the visual appearance will change. Like, so you, you will get, sometimes if you over trim the flower, it'll look like it was over trimmed. Sometimes you'll take the calyxes off. You'll, it'll just look like it was, it was over trimmed basically. Um, so the look will change a little bit. We only recommend dry trimming now. Wet trimming used to be something that we did recommend, but if you want the best smelling flower possible, dry trimming is the best way. So your machines do, we like do wet we, trimming wet, and yeah. wet trimming and dry trimming. Okay. Um, the challenge when you, when you wet trim a flower, when you cut the leaf, the leaf will bleed a little bit of a liquid, right? There's moisture that comes out of that leaf. That moisture will give off a smell. It's a green volatile organic compound, which is it's hexanol is one of the compounds in there. And hexanol is what when you when you cut your grass, if you have a, a lawn or a golf course, and they cut the grass in the golf course, it smells like cut grass. Cannabis will have the same cut grass smell if you cut it wet. And so that smell isn't ideal because you don't want your, your cannabis to smell like cut grass. You can get that smell out by curing it or drying it properly, but it'll never be perfect. And so when you trim the flower dry, you don't get that, that bad smell. Who needs these kind of machines in the industry? So anyone who doesn't want to spend a lot of time doing manual labor. So we have a small machine here that's for a, basically a home grower that'll do about a kilo an hour. We have a machine that will do 80 kilos in an hour. An no, hour. This, this will do about 40 an hour. We have a much you bigger. You have a bigger one? Much bigger. It's as big as this whole area, this whole room. So it's for people who are doing thousands of kilos a week. So only a few clients are doing that, right? Or uh, Globally, there's probably 200 clients that are doing thousands of kilos a week. Right on. Yeah. yeah. Where do you envision the future of Twister Technologies going in? We're going to continue to innovate in the post-harvest section of cannabis. Most people can grow good cannabis now, but it's the post-harvest side where there's a lot of mistakes that are made. People either over trim their flower or they don't dry it properly, they don't cure it properly. And so flower can go from being really good to not so good really quickly if you don't do that, that portion of the process right. And so that's where we spend most of our time. Cool. Yeah. Are there any other aspects of this machine that we should be aware of that you, or that you would like to highlight? Uh, I think there's only one thing is if you're looking at a trimming machine, there's kind of two styles. There's a batch style, which is like this. You load the flower into it, 
it tumbles for 20 minutes, trims all the leaves off, you come back and you take the flower out. The other style is where you put flour in one end and it comes out the other end of the machine. And so as you feed flour in, it keeps coming out the other end. That's the, the ideal method of doing it. Not the ideal, that's, that's more of a commercial way of doing it. It's the same way as an automobile maker will make an automobile or a car. It's on a factory line, like one piece comes in, one piece comes out, yeah. the same thing. They call it single piece flow. And so there's a batch style machine and a single piece flow machine. So if you're more of a commercial operator, typically you'll go with a, a single piece flow machine. So one piece in, one piece out. So this is Jay Evans. Thanks to the community at Envola. I appreciate you guys' time.